Today let's talk about Docker containers versus virtual machines. So what are the differences, what are the benefits of containers compared to virtual machines and if they are so good, do we actually still need virtual machines anymore? Hi everybody, my name is Christian and I make great tutorials and content for IT professionals. I also stream every Wednesday and Thursday on Twitch, so if you have any questions for me or you just want to see which projects I'm running with my Docker containers, just jump into my live streams. It's always a lot of fun. So to understand the concepts behind containers and virtual machines, we also need to talk a bit about the architecture. Because although containers and virtual machines try to solve the same problem of isolating applications and workloads from each other, they are from a technical perspective completely different technologies. And you probably are already familiar with the concept of virtual machines, but let me also summarize that pretty quickly so that everybody is on the same page. So let's first start with the architecture of virtual machines and we will always start with the infrastructure. So the infrastructure is the physical hardware that can be your home lab server, that can be a data center server or any kind of computer actually. On top of that hardware, we will install an operating system and then we will install something that is called a hypervisor. So the hypervisor is the main component that will actually virtualize this hardware infrastructure and dedicate those resources to separate virtual machines. So you can decide how many CPU cores you want to give a virtual machine, how much memory and disks and other hardware devices you want to attach to this virtual machine. But the hypervisor will create the illusion for the virtual machine that it would run just like a normal computer on a physical hardware machine. And then you can basically install any type of operating system inside this virtual machine and install all your services and applications on top of that operating system. So with this method, you can easily install different operating system on one single type of hardware. For example, you can install a mixture of Linux servers with Windows servers in different versions, distributions and whatever you need to deploy your applications. The benefits are that you can utilize those physical hardware resources much more efficiently and you only need to maintain one single hardware machine. So this is also pretty useful. It's very well proven in the industry and many, many companies are actually using virtualization to separate those different workloads like installing different servers with different purposes, for example, database servers, web servers, Windows servers and so on. So that sounds pretty great, right? So why do we actually need something like Docker containers? Well, before we start with the benefits of Docker containers, let's have a look at the architecture and how it is different from virtual machines. Well, we start somehow with the same purpose. So we need to install an operating system on an infrastructure, but instead of installing a hypervisor that will virtualize hardware for different virtual machines, we are taking that part away and installing something that is called the Docker engine. So note there are different possibilities to run and maintain containers, but it's still the most popular and the most widespread engine in the IT industry. So on top of the Docker engine, we are running something that is called a container. And the main difference between a virtual machine and a Docker container is that the virtual machine has a fully flashed operating system installed in every single instance. And a Docker container only contains the necessary binaries and libraries that are needed to run the application. So therefore Docker containers are much more lightweight. They are also just booting up in one or two seconds. So they are just instantly booted. And this makes them much more efficient in terms of performance and disk size. So from a system administrator's perspective, it's much more efficient to run everything in a Docker container because you don't have the overhead of a full operating system in every single instance of workload you want to deploy. But also from a developer's perspective, Docker containers have many many benefits over virtual machines. And the major benefit here is that developers don't need to maintain their applications for different types of operating systems or different types of libraries, distributions or everything like this. Because when you develop an application, you would need to require a specific version or a specific state of libraries for that application. But you actually don't know on which system that will be installed. 
So for example, if the system administrator is upgrading those libraries and those binaries, that could break something within your application or there are some files or things that are not expected on this machine where you want to install this application. A Docker container always has a consistent state, so you can decide as a developer how this container is packaged. So which version of those libraries are packaged in this container image and what is the state of the system, where are the files located and so on. So you always have a consistent state of what is actually running in the container. Compared to a virtual machine, you actually don't know what type of distribution is running there, where are the files located, what customization to binaries or config files administrators have done. And therefore it's very important that Docker containers are immutable. So that means that when you change something within the Docker container itself, and to restart the container afterwards, those changes are completely gone. So you cannot change anything inside the Docker container, but you can attach persistent volumes to that. So for example, if you want to store persistent data on a hard disk or something else. But the core system, the core Docker image is always immutable. And because of those benefits, most IT companies are actually migrating their applications and services from virtual machine deployments to Docker containers. And companies have built complete orchestration tools around containerization. So for example, if you want to easily scale those containers from one instance to thousands of instances in just a few seconds, this is definitely possible. It's fully automated and high available between different worker nodes. So this comes with many, many benefits for enterprise and environments for large cloud deployments and so on. And this is actually where containerization is very, very well known, where containerization has a lot more benefits over virtual machines. And this is the reason why it became so popular and why everybody is using that. But when Docker containers are so great and when they have so many benefits, why do we actually still need a virtual machine? Well, in some scenarios, you cannot do something with a Docker container that you can do with a virtual machine. So when you want to run Windows container, you will need to run them on a Windows host operating system. And if you want to run Linux Docker containers, you will need to run them on a Linux operating system. And there are also some other situations where developers or vendors or applications are not having a Docker image ready, so where it requires you to install that directly on a server. And in these situations, you would still need a virtual machine. So this is a reason why we always will see a mixture of those technologies in the field. Although companies are driving more towards containers and a lot of things and services will be migrated to containers, there will be still the need for some virtual machines and specific scenarios. But undoubtedly containerization is a very important technology in the IT industry and I just think that will become much more important in the future as well. So it actually is very important when you want to keep up to date, when you want to develop your IT career, that you familiarize yourself with containerization. And if you want to do that, if you don't know where to start and how to use Docker containers in your own environment and how to get started with that. I've made two videos about Docker and Docker Compose. There I will teach you all the fundamentals about containers and how to install Docker on your system and how to use that to deploy your first containers and get some experience in the field and just play around with that to familiarize yourself with this new technology. And if you're still unsure if you should deploy your application in a Docker container or in a virtual machine, just follow a simple pattern. Just look if the application or the software has a Docker image available and and if it does, just run it in a container. It's just better, it's much more efficient and portable, and it has a lot of benefits over virtual machines. But there are some applications or some situations where you don't want to do that and where you still need a virtual machine, for example, if you need a specific operating system or you need some specific requirements that are not available in a Docker container, then just create a virtual machine. So I also do that in my own environment. I've migrated almost everything to Docker containers, but I still use virtual machine in order to test out different operating systems or play around with different deployment methods. So in these cases, I still use virtual machines. So I hope you liked this video and this was helpful to you to better understand the differences of virtual machines and containerizing. And if you enjoyed that, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content for IT professionals or want to see more tutorials on those topics as well. And please leave me a comment if you're already using Docker containers in your own or company environment or if you plan to migrate to those containers as well. So just leave me a comment. I would be very, very interested in this. 
So before I go, I want to give a quick shout out to all my supporters on Patreon, especially Mason, who is the producer of this show. And if you want to support my mission to help as many people as possible to get in the field of IT and become real IT professionals, just support me on Patreon. So thanks everybody for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care of yourself and I see you soon.